Hello, everyone. Welcome to the week five of Business Operations Management. This is lecturer Saida Faisal Sofra. So today we are going to cover the role and scope of business management. At the end of this session, you will be able to demonstrate and understand what is team working, what is team building, the principles of leadership, and how to be a good leader. So basically, what is a team? Does a team need a leader? If yes, why? What are the characteristics of good leader? So team is basically a group of individuals who work together to achieve a common goal or objective. It can be made up of people from different departments, functions, or even organizations. Team members should be transparent, supportive, and sincere in their contact with each other and willing to learn from each other. Group or team. So teams are interdependent, working together to emphasize each other's strengths and complete a common goal. On the other hand, group utilize individual strengths to get work done and members focus on their own goals. Here is the difference between group and team. Group have individual goals, individual accountability, and individual success or failure. Whereas team have shared goals, individual and mutual accountability, collective success or failure. So what are the stages of team building and which one do you think is the most important one? We're gonna discuss in detail. So there are five stages of forming a team. Start from forming, storming, norming, performing, and adjoining. So synergy, what does it mean? How do we achieve synergy? So example of synergy is one plus one is less than two versus sum of individual contribution. Here it shows why effective team is important. If there is no communication or coordination between the team, it's going to break like this. The task is not going to be completed. Leader. So does a team need a leader? So a team typically needs a leader to provide direction, guidance, and support. And a leader can help to set the team's goals, establish the team's culture and values, and ensure that the team members are working together effectively. A leader doesn't have to be a boss. So be a good leader. So this is the difference between a boss and a leader. So a boss, it drives employees, use the employee, commands, depends on authority, micromanage, generates fear, demands respect, makes employee feel inferior. Where a leader, it leads the employee, develop employees, ask them, depends on the good will, inspire enthusiasm, earns respect, make employees feel valued. So what are the characteristics of a good leader? Effective communication, responsibility and accountability, self-motivation, long-term thinking, confidence, people skills, emotional intelligence, ethics, open-mindedness, optimism, character, passion. So what are some interpersonal skills of a good leader? Leadership, team building, motivation, communication, influencing, decision-making, political and cultural awareness, negotiation, trust building, conflict management, coaching. So to practice leadership, we need certain qualities, guidance, solution, goal, motivation, direction, vision, plan, and communication. Welcome to Business Operations Management Week 6. We're gonna learn about organizational ethics and social responsibilities. So today's learning outcome is demonstrate an understanding about business ethics, to explain the scope of the social responsibility, contextualize of knowledge within a real business. So here is a small video on organizational ethics to better understand how ethics work in an organization. Understanding organizational ethics and ethical business practice. So what is a reasonable price for a certain product or service? How do you feel when a reasonable price was charged for a product or service? And how do you feel when a reasonable price was charged for a certain product? So how you label anything as reasonable? Is it subjective or objective? Here are some examples used in the class. For example, Lidl, Morrison, Sainsbury, and their price has been considered and compared to state whether their prices are reasonable or unreasonable. Equality and equity. 
To understand the ethics and ethical business practice, it's very important to understand what is, what is equality, what is equity. So equality is basically sameness and equity is basically fairness. So when we run a business, we need to consider whether we are going to operate our business ethically, equally or equitably. Business ethics. So what is the definition of ethics? So business ethics is the rules of the principles and standards of deciding what is morally right or wrong when working. So according to BBC, ethics is a system of moral principles that affect how people make decisions and lead their lives. Ethics cover the following dilemmas, how to live a good life, our rights and responsibilities, the language of right and wrong, and moral decisions, what is good and bad. Here are some examples of ethics and ethical business which starts with inclusion, diversity, anti-corruption measures, social responsibility, accounting, transparent, fair labor practices, and environmental responsibilities. Here is an understanding of social responsibility. So a business aims for certain goals and under certain goals are certain objectives. So when we make the goal, the goal has to be smart. And while making it, we have to consider uh, about our society, about our environment, which is our responsibility being a social responsible citizen. So what is the difference between legal business and illegal business and also ethical business and unethical business? So we are going to describe and discuss in detail. So how do we evaluate a business, whether it's legal or illegal? How do we evaluate a business ethical or unethical? How do we subjectify or objectify? To what extent do we give the title of uh, business, uh, whether they're legal or illegal, ethical or unethical? Here's a short video on social responsibility. Moving on, corporate social responsibility. So what is a corporate social responsibility? So it is a management concept where companies integrate social and environmental concerns in their business operations and interactions with their stakeholders. And CSR is generally understood as being the way through which a company achieves a balance of economic, environmental, social imperatives. For example, triple bottom line approach. So CSR, it gives you a social awareness of being loyal, and have your morality, awareness, environment, and behavior while creating new products or services for the customers. Here is an example of the companies with the best CSR reputation. Thank you.